Shabbat Shalom, great saints of Yahweh. May the peace of Yahweh be with each and every one of you. You may be seated. All right, we're going to have to go at a fire speed here. Um, last time I was here, we were talking about uh, this sun god and the super Sunday that was fixing to take place. Here's the headline on Drudge when Pastor was speaking a couple Sabbaths ago, and he talked about, he said, today's 1117. And he said, we're, this new calendar, we're going to be turning this, this system around. We're going to be turning it upside down. Can you show the next slide? <laughs> you see that 1117? That's called, it's no longer the Super Bowl, it's going to be down the toilet bowl. There you go, 1117. And even if that day wasn't 1117, certainly the next day was, right? So, go to the next slide, please. We're going to be continuing to expose this man of sin in the midst of tribulation. And I think these messages are being speeded up because we don't have much time. Okay, now... We've got the new calendar online. You know, the first thing you see on that write-up is we've got to get their names out of our mouths. In other words, you know, don't give honor to these gods. Remember Psalm 16, 4. God on lips, you know, 666. We've got to get these gods out of our mouth. Can I have my next slide? Here's the man, Pope Gregory the 13th, Latin name Gregorius the 13th. Uh, his born his born name was Ugo von Kampny, and he's from a place called Bologna, which I think he's full of. <laughs> That's pretty fitting. <laughs> um, but, you know, I want to title this sermon today, Dragon Pope and Dragon, the Great Red Dragon. Because I want you to notice he was Pope from 1572 to 1585. Now, you know, some of these popes were a little more obvious with what they were doing. Okay, some of them are great at pretending, but this one was really up front about what this church is all about. Can I have my next slide? Let's look at his name in Germatria. Just look at the first top number, Gregorius the 13th, Ugo von Kampny is 1404. Can I have my next slide? 1404, look at that. Dragon. A dragon. And notice it says, all it means to see. You know, like the Holy See, or that all-seeing eye. And it says, like serpents, seeing their prey from afar, exercising his subtle impact on heathen governments. You know, this subtle impact, like this calendar that he made. How it had a subtle impact on everyone in worshiping these gods and getting them to be, you know, controlled with these gods, okay, in their mind. Let's go to the next slide. Remember, he's the Dragon Pope. Dragon Pope 666. Be, please be writing these down because these are all going to be in the book of 666 that the House of Yahweh is going to be putting out. Can I have my next slide? This is what's called, and I think it's cut off at the top, it's called the Coat of Arms of Pope Gregory the Thirteenth. Now, isn't this interesting? In the middle there, you see a flying dragon. Remember, this is his coat of arms. This is his insignia. It's actually even the insignia of his family. And this is found in the ceiling of the church of Santa Maria in Araceli in Rome, Italy. Okay? Can I have my next slide? Here's another picture of his, his papal crest. Now, notice this. Now, who would be putting a dragon? <laughs> really? <laughs> a dragon. Using a dragon? <laughs> Can I have my next slide? Coat of arms, 666. Okay, coat of arms. Does anybody here have a coat of arms? Hopefully not, because that's a, that's a war signia, insignia. Can I have my next slide? Here's another picture in the Vatican. In a, this is what's in a, a, a monument honoring Pope Gregory the 13th. Notice the red dragon, again, in the center. Can I have my next slide? There you go, it's got his Latin name written around that circle, and it's got the dragon in the middle. Remember, this is all about the one that made the calendar, the commission, this Gregorian calendar. Next slide. Here's the tomb of Gregory the 13th, complete with a dragon at the base. <laughs> Next slide. 
This is from St. Peter's Basilica information online, this monument to Gregory the 13th. It says, this monument represents the Pope giving his blessing on top of an urn bearing a relief showing the promulgation of the Gregorian calendar in 1582 when October 4th was followed by October 15th. Remember, he knocked off 10 days off the calendar. At the sides, there are allegorical statues of religions holding the tablets of the law and the magnificence at the base is a dragon alluding to the heraldic device of the Boncomni family. That was their family crest as well, okay? And notice that to the right there, a red dragon. This is on their website. This is a Vatican website. Next slide. Here's the epitaph written on the base of that statue where that dragon is. And this time they're calling him Gregoria 13 Pont Max, like Pontifus Maximus, or the high priest of the Roman faith. Next slide. And again, it comes up 1404. What a coincidence, right? Remember, that means dragon. Can I have my next slide? You know, behold, the great red dragon. Okay, now 666. But notice the other two numbers, 1296. Let's look at that. Next slide. 1296 divided by 216 is 6. Okay, so you see the 666 even in that number. Next slide. The third number is 216, which we, don't, we should all be familiar with. Next slide. Which is 6 times 6 times 6. So you see 666 written all over this, Behold the Great Red Dragon. Okay? This is not a coincidence. Next slide, please. Switch gears a little bit. Did you notice the other day we had a, the 18th school shooting in 2018? Did that click in your mind? 666. Did anybody see that? Just the other day in Florida. Remember, in Florida is where the uh, the other shooting, the Pulse shooting occurred on 61206. I mean, 61216. The same day, Pastor was up here and myself talking about the number 18 on that first page. Okay, and the number 666. How many days ago was that from that shooting? Can I have the next slide? What a coincidence. From June 12, 2016 to Wednesday, it says 14th of February, which is the Roman names, 612 days. 612, you remember that number? Wow, what a coincidence. <laughs> okay, next slide. Here is a coin, uh, a monu uh, they call it a, it's kind of like a coin that was cast that year that Pope Gregory the 13th changed the calendar, okay, from the Julian to the Gregorian. He had, an, he had a, a decree he put out about this, but this is a coin that co commemorated that event. Now, I want to look at the, uh, the flip side of that coin there, you know, the back side a little closer. Can we have the next slide? I want you to notice what you see there. <laughs> you see a dragon swallowing his own tail, okay, and you see... What looks like, they say it's a ram there. And, you know, the ram, now I want you to give you a little background about this calendar. The reason Pope Gregory claims that he wanted to change his calendar is to set Easter on March 21st. Like the Council of Nicaea told them to do. But 10 days had been, you know, added on the calendar and it wasn't falling on the 21st of March anymore. So he decided to get it back to March 21st. We need to knock 10 days off. So... March 21st is when the sign of the ram and the zodiac, Aries, actually comes into play. So what's, what's shown there is the circle, the snake eating its own tail, is the yearly cycle where it will always end up on March 21st, Easter Sunday. Remember, this is all about the worship of the Easter sun goddess and the gods and goddesses of the sun. But if you look at that ram's head really close, doesn't that look like a serpent's head? And I also see a couple sixes for horns. I think we need to look at that a little closer next time. Can I have my next slide? Now, the papal decree changing the calendar, Pope Gregory's papal decree, was called intergravismus, uh, which means uh, something about, you know, this is something very important we need to do. We need to change this calendar. 
Um, that was the name of the decree. Can I have my next slide? And remember, Pope's Decree 666. Okay? Can I have my next slide? I'm going to read one quote at the top. At the beginning, it says, Among our serious pastoral duties... Not the last is that we care to complete those sacred rights reserved by the Council of Trent in 1545 to 63 with the guiding assistance of God. And remember, guided by a God was 666. But I want you to notice the 17th, the very last paragraph of this decree. This is a threat against you right here. Everybody sitting in this sanctuary. You ready? Let's show it. 17. No one among men, therefore, is permitted to infringe on this page our prescription, mandate, establishment, wish, approval, prohibition, suppression, abolition, exhortation, and request, nor dare reckless opposition. But if you tamper with this, he's talking about this calendar, this decree, Almighty God will take you up with indignation, and you will have the fortune to encounter His apostles Peter and Paul. Well, I wonder who he's talking to, because the only one brave enough that I know to change this calendar, which we've done now, House of Yahweh, give Yahweh a hand. Can I have my next slide, please? Here's the gematria. There's only one number you can use because the other ones were way too big. 3712, that's the gematria of this threat that he made. Can I have my next slide? Look at that. All right, because the branch and the donkeys, right, are the ones to do this work and change this decree. Are you scared? <laughs> Next slide. 3712 in the Greek, it means it's the word fathom and it's from 3713 and it means to stretch oneself, reach after, long for, covet after and desire. Because we desire righteousness, right, House of Yahweh? We do everything we can to become righteous. It's from 3735, and it means a mountain, as lifting itself above the plain. Turn to Zechariah 4.7, please, in your book, Yahweh. Zechariah 4.7, on page 718. Again, i got to move rapidly. It says, Who are you, O great mountain, Pope Gregory, Red Dragon, Catholic Church? Who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you will become a plain. You know why? Because this mountain is going to be lifted up. It's being lifted as we speak. Okay? Look at verse 10 or verse 9. The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands will also finish it. And you will know that Yahweh of hosts has sent me to you. Now turn over to Daniel 2.35 very quickly. Because remember, Daniel shows the destruction of this image of Babylon by the stone cut out without hands. Daniel 2.35, the very last part of the verse, he says, he talks about that image that struck with the stone. The stone is the house of Yahweh. And it says, and the stone that struck the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. And Babylon, again, is going to become a plain. Okay? Next slide. Now, the Gregorian calendar came out in 1582. That was 436 years ago this year. Next slide, please. 436 means to stand against, to resist, to oppose. Establish one's position publicly by conspicuous, conspicuously, like putting out a calendar in, 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 in opposition to Pope Gregory's decree, right? means to forcefully declare one's personal convictions, to strongly resist an opponent. Doesn't that was, isn't that what Zerubbabel means? He who opposes Babylon. Next slide. 436 in the Hebrew is a terebinth. Turn over to Genesis 12 so you can see what a terebinth is. Genesis 12.1 or 12.6 says, And Abram traveled through the land as far as the side of Shechem to the mighty teacher. That's the word terebinth, okay? The mighty teacher. Who's that? That's right, it's the branch. The one you've tethered yourself to. Aren't you glad? <laughs> Next slide. 
Now look here, Israel, my beloved, turn to Revelation, look at the number, 2216. Now turn to Revelation 2216. Okay? Revelation 2216, this has been brought out before, about his signet. He says, I, Yahshua, have sent my Moloch to testify to you these things in the congregations of the house of Yahweh. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Now, Pastor told us a while back, we need to write under that, my Moloch, Malachim. And he also said, that's us, the donkeys. I'm going to prove it to you right now. This is the 16th book of Israel. The very last chapter, and by the way, your homework is to read the last two chapters of the 16th book before our next meeting. Okay, please remember that. This is the very last chapter, 43 and verse 75. Pastor says, now prophecy, that prophecy, you can't beat these prophecies. They're 100% effective. He says, back to Revelation 1.1. 1, 1. The revelation of Yahshua Messiah, which Yahweh gave to him to show his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it through his Moloch to his servant, Yachanan. That word signified means signify through his messenger. Revelation 22.16 shows who his messenger is. He says that messenger... He signifies it through his messenger in 2216 to his servant, to his servant who was Yachanan. He says that messenger is shown in Genesis 49, the donkeys. So Yahweh gives this to Yahshua, who gives it to his messenger to show to Yachanan. Remember the family film last night? Who was showing Yachanan these things? It was pastor, just like he showed to Daniel and other prophets, right? Through the television. Okay, now watch. Next slide. 22.16. In Strong's, is there a Babel? What a coincidence, right? Next slide. 22.16. In the Greek, is there a Babel? Now, that's a coincidence, I'm sure. Now, so who is his Moloch? Next slide. Who is his Moloch? 8.60. Let's see who that is. It says 8.60. Let's look at that number. Next slide. The donkeys. Oh, Yahshua's Malik, Malachim, the donkeys working with the branch, right? Just like Pastor just said. Just like Pastor just said. Isn't that amazing? Okay. Isn't that incredible? And no, notice this. It's the very word used in Genesis 49, 11. <laughs> Remember he said in Genesis 49, those messengers are shown. That messenger is... The branch and the donkeys together doing this work. Aren't you glad you've tethered yourself to Israel Hawkins? But there's a little more than that. Check this out. Go to the next slide. In the Greek, it means fastening, joining. It's from 680. And it means to attach oneself to. To fasten oneself to. To adhere to. To cling to. And it's from 681, and it means to fasten to, to set on fire. Remember, Yahshua lit up this seventh work, and we're working together with Yahshua. Yahshua gave this message to Pastor the Branch and his donkeys to get this work done. And we're doing that work, right, House of Yahweh? So, there you go. Don't, leave, don't believe the news hype. You better look up. Because your redemption is drawing near, House of Yahweh. Aren't you glad you're behind the branch? <laughs> Stay behind the branch. Okay, stay behind them. We're going to win, House of Yahweh. And with that, if, if you'd all please stand. It is my great honor and opportunity to present to you another great donkey in Yahweh's house, the great Kahan.